Every year, the best Sanda fighters from all over the world come to compete at the World Wushu Championships. But what in the heck is Sanda? Sa Sanda? Sanda? Sa Does that sound about right to you? This is... This Chinese kickboxing style is unique for a couple of different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Get your medal. With the heart will Which is exactly why I'm here for the weekend. To learn the ways of Sanda. Through some training, some commentating, and most importantly, rooting on the USA, baby! <laughs> but when I first got there, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty one-track minded. You wanna go? Yes, let's step on it. <laughs> I see the I see you why I, like, I, I want to like, touch that thing. I gotta stand on that. <laughs> so for the raised arena, mm -hmm. what happens if you fall off? So you feel a crash pad. Right? Yeah, this is pretty it's this pretty is, spongy. Yeah, yeah. This is not bad. So the old way, the old days we talk about like where does this come from? Yeah. You know, yeah, what, whether, what does this come whether, from? Whether it's stories <laughs> or whatnot, the idea was in China, like I'm in the town, I wanna be the martial arts instructor, right? Okay. I wanna teach people kung fu. Okay. You also are in that town. Yeah. Well, how do we settle this? Well, we build a platform in the middle of the town square or whatever. Yeah. And we basically play no rules king of the hill. King of the mountain. Sick. Right? Yeah. Now supposedly these platforms would be much higher. Okay. There was no mat. Yeah. Meaning if I chuck you off it, it's a big deal. Just spikes. Yeah, you know, we see that in the movies, but, yeah. pro but probably not space, but probably like right. the earth. Everything is bolted Yeah. with scaffolding and everything. Yeah. I actually had to bolt everything in because I was the guy that... If it that, falls apart, it's that, that, yeah, it, It's my fault if it, if it falls <laughs> apart, right? Underneath is foam, a red crash mat. Very aesthetically pleasing. Yes, correct, correct, correct. But once you're on top of this mat, the rules get a little interesting. It's a point-based system off of ones and twos. Two fighters get in the ring and they exchange strikes, landing a punch to the head, to the body that makes a sound or moves your opponent. It's convincing that you landed it, it's one point. Thwack, score. If you land a kick to the legs, one point. Thwack, score again. Now kicks to the body or to the head are worth two points because they're a bit riskier. Because if you get your kick caught and they take you down, they don't touch the ground, you fall down, they don't, that's two points. Now if they take you down, you fall down first, but you take them down with you, that's only one point. Here's the kicker. If if they push you off, that's two points. If they push you off twice, that's two points and you automatically win the round. All the striking base points are decided by judges on the outside of the ring, there's five of them. All the takedown base points are decided by the ref, he's in the middle, he's wearing white. And the coaches in the audience can see these scores in real time. <sighs> First to win two rounds wins, two minutes per round, although it's not really, it's hard to explain. But that about covers the basics. Hopefully. I don't know, I'm just a guy on YouTube explaining things with little little characters. So yeah. some are like real low scoring gunslinger technical kind of things and yeah. some are like firefights where they're letting go and both are... Sounds exciting either bo way. Both are rad. So what would the next step be then? Do I need to like learn what the techniques are? Do I need to... Yeah, I Is mean... there you, a way for me to do you, that? You probably know the techniques because there's nothing in Sanda that you haven't seen before. Yeah. But sometimes the strategy of the application is what I would say. Okay. And it's nice to have people believe in you and all. But I got my mind blown like 13 and a half times in the next hour. By this guy here, Corey Johnson, one of the two coaches for the USA Sanda team. Like for us, we're, we're pretty well-rounded. We have really probably better hands than most. Okay, here's what we're doing. 60% of my weight on my front 40 on my back. Okay. Hands up, elbows in. Yeah. Ah, pop it. The purity of this sport, I, I like pure sports. This is the best sport when it comes to punching, kicking, and wrestling. Period. Hands down. The ability for someone to catch your kick and take you down effectively really changes the way the game's played. Right. Tighter. Yeah. And it makes sense to also be really boxing heavy. So you kind of mitigate yeah, anybody exactly. shooting. I don't know what to do with that. Cross it, cross it. That's new to me. Sumo! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have a heart attack. That's wild. Is there like a, a meta to striking when takedowns are so 
impactful in the match? The, the truth is, is that takedowns will always dictate judges' decisions. Oh, wow. So there's an emphasis on wrestling. So the thing that separates Sanda from other sports, in my opinion, is that the emphasis on being able to take you down. And luckily for me, I was about to get a good representation of what that feels. Did you guys come from different backgrounds, or did you both start with Sanda? I had a small traditional background growing up, but okay. I got serious about martial arts when I, when I found Sanda. That was Livingston and Vincent, two of the fighters for the US team. There's also Audrey, Jaden, and Bruce fighting on the weekend. But Livingston here is gonna give me a feel of what Sanda is like. So it's not mentally different from anything else you do. This is just a regular thing for you guys. Well, it, yeah, the stage is bigger though, you know? So, I mean, the tournaments get progressively bigger with this being the biggest. The level of skill is just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the takedowns. Hold it for a world. The unique thing about the sport is that um, every country brings a different specialization. It's yeah, like if you watch China, China has a very different style of wrestling. They have a sport called Swai Jiao, which is Chinese quick wrestling, so it's a little bit different. Some sure. countries like, uh, I think Lebanon's a good example, is they're pretty well-rounded, but they're very physical. So like Livingston, the guy you fought over there, Livingston and I both have black belts in jiu-jitsu. So like lately in that sport, it's, you know, wrestling has made such a big impact on it, so we have a lot of Western wrestling influence. Western wrestling influence that I was about to feel all over. This is a cool one. So I catch, Bob, I want you to hop. When I hop, I'm gonna change direction. Oh! It was really cool to see how many different ways they had to dump me on my head after throwing what is my favorite thing, a kick. It feels like this style is designed to be like, hey, you know that Seth guy? Screw him. <laughs> Underhook, I bring his weight to me. I block his outside foot trying to make him put his hand on the mat. Right. Oh, because even the hand, right. three points. You can tell the passion that these guys have for the sport. This is the amateur portion of Wushu, which means these guys do this for pull free. Him, him. And I bite on this elbow, I turn my face, my leg goes in between his. Okay. So, there are certain countries that specialize in that. So you'll see like Iran, Iran, Afghanistan. Yeah. They're very good about going, what? Boom, bomb, bomb. Yeah. Now I arm drag across, head behind his head. The time that they're taking with me, despite being in the middle of their biggest tournament of the year, that's how you know how big of a deal this is. I also think that Coach Corey might just be kind of a Sanda savant. I actually am just fat and greasy. Have you guys seen Coach Lee? Coach Lee, you meet, you met. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, really. We are good friends. We have to yeah. talk about this. Yeah, we, we, we have a chat. No, 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 I have to say this. Okay. I might coach because now he's a big wig in the organization, but really, he is the real reason why U.S. I'm not joking. I'm not I, kissing I, his ass. I like, the guy changed the game in the country. Really. That's pretty amazing. And while Coach Lee deflects all the praise he deserves, we move on to day two. And this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. That was so fun. Those fights are amazing. I kind of just want to watch, watch more. This sport's insane. 
But there was one set of matches that I hadn't seen yet, and that was Team USA. But probably the most important thing about uh, the United States in this is it's a different time frame for success. Living since 35. The thing with Americans is it's not a it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Uh, Audrey, the girl we're gonna have, she's a little bit different because she's trained with us since she was eight. Like you don't have career athletes. Most countries in Asia have state funding. So these guys are professional athletes. They get a monthly stipend and they get big checks for winning. To where we pay to do this. It's a hard sport for us to ever catch up because what you're essentially asking is an 18 year old kid to, hey, I need you to get a full time job. I need you to train five days a week. You're gonna have to diet all the time. You're gonna get beat up all the time. You're gonna watch your friends go to college and get careers and go make money. You're gonna live like a broke bastard for your whole life. And then at some point it just becomes like, what am I doing? Livingston, Livingston's a, in oil and gas. Audrey just graduated college. I think she's trying to be a police officer. Mouthpiece, water. We have to catch up through all that training to where these guys right. are training eight hours a day and they fight like 60 times. They fight 60 times a year. Yeah, that's it. It'll be fun. Let's have fun. Connor! 
ready for the counter. Counter something. He's gonna side kick with it, all he's got. No, 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 I have to say this. Okay. Really, we've got our ass kicked for years, and I met Coach 18 years ago, and I think we've had three bronze medals at least in 20 years, and in today we already have a guaranteed three. So I might coach because now he's a big wig in the organization, but really, he is the real reason why U.S. I'm not joking. I'm not I, kissing I, his ass. Like, the guy changed the game in the country. 52 kilograms, bronze medalist. Livingston McKenzie Jr. representing the United States of America. The silver medalist representing the United States of America is Chi Wei Wang. So here's the thing. This is, without a doubt, the biggest wushu competition ever. This is crazy. Yes. And this will never come back to the U.S. for probably another 20 to 30 years. The last time this was held, as you might know, was in 1995 in Baltimore. That's 28 years. Wow. Right, Audrey, you're going to medal in your first world. I'm so excited. Oh my God. It's, it's the only world. It's the only world. Dude, I use it. Come visit me. I will, I will. Stand. I will. Yeah, the best yes. thing is to come train. Yes. Yeah. Me. A coach, Whiskey. A coach Beer. has the best okay. coaching style. I cannot talk too much. He has the best coaching we'll style. Cut he opens the door and smokes cigars and just yells at people. I got the best style. I got a taste of that on the Zoom call. Still very Chinese style. Are these your I smoke. No, no, no. 